Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today as we discuss the design of an automated layer picking system from data analysis to return on investment. My name is Jason Perks. I'm a Solutions Sales Director with Viastore Systems, and joining me today is Aaron Batts, who's our Solutions Development Department Manager. So Viastore is a systems integrator that works on simple to complex automated systems, large and small. Um, we like to help our customers with a number of designs uh, to meet their operational needs. We are also a worldwide systems integrator. So while we do manufacture our own ASRS cranes, pallet conveyor, case conveyor, and various other components, we're also able to pick from the best of breed technology from around the world to implement solutions for our customers uh, to meet their ROI and operational needs. As we design a system, we want to optimize the concept to get the right level of automation. While automation is good, the temptation is there to try to automate all aspects of the operation, while only a portion of the solution is justifiable. The key is to evaluate the design requirements and choose the area that produces the best ROI and recognize that certain functions may be best addressed with manual or semi-automated solutions. The first step to the process is to understand the current operation. Key steps like walking through the customer's facility or discussing a drawing of the current operation can provide a good picture of what's actually going on within the facility. We want to discuss the goals of the project as well. This may include changes to the process flow, as well as growth in business, labor savings, and current pain points in the existing operation. This is also important early in the process to understand any limitations the customer may have, such as labor restrictions, hours of operations, and the space available for a solution to be installed in. Ideally, we begin the data analysis by evaluating a full year's worth of data. This should include both shipping and receiving data. Typically, we like to consider designing to the 95th percentile, as this will cover the most days, and outliers can be typically be handled by modifying the system operation. For example, extending a shift slightly or from flexibility in how orders are processed. Periodic reviews with our customers are important to validate findings and confirm that what we are observing is in alignment with their expectations. Oftentimes, the detailed analysis unveils aspects of the customer's operation that they have not recognized or considered before. In this particular example, we recognize that there were three different picking methods a customer could use to process their orders. Case pick, layer pick, and full pallet pick. There were also mixed orders with varying profiles where we had three different technologies all mixed together within the same order. When we looked closer at the less than full pallet volume, we found the hidden gem that was key to this solution. 90% of all cases that were less than full pallet pick could be picked in full layer quantities. Automating full layer picks was much more cost effective than automating individual case picking resulting in a solution that was that greatly reduced the customer's dependency on manual picking while not requiring the same level of investment required as a solution as a solution automating all of the individual case picking this hybrid approach is an example of finding the optimal level of automation where focusing on automating automating portions of the operation provided the highest ROI Once we have completed the data analysis, we finalize the design criteria for the system and start to formulate a material flow based on the functional requirements, not tied to any particular technology. Again, we make sure to review our findings and projected design criteria with the customer to make sure that our targets align with their perception of their business and their goals for their system. As Jason mentioned, we manufacture cranes, but we do not want to limit our designs to solutions that just use the equipment that we manufacture. We really want to make sure that we apply the right technology that will give our customers the solution that best reaches their goals. Only after we've completed the analysis do we begin to select the equipment required for the design. I admit it's very tempting during the analysis process to begin identifying the solution, but it's critical that we let the requirements dictate the equipment and not try to force a solution that's not ideal. Once we have identified the technologies to be used, we will work through the system design, fitting the solution into the space available at the customer's site. It's important to us to, for us to understand the space available and any interactions to the existing operation. Design reviews are held with the end user once we have an initial design. This typically is an iterative process as we seek to finalize the solution. 
Oftentimes, we'll identify multi multiple solutions that have varying benefits. We will frequently develop these solutions until we find a reason to eliminate the less desirable ones. It's common for us to review multiple solutions with our customers and discuss the budgetary costs for each of them. While working with our customers to create customized solutions, we keep an eye to the return an eye on the return on investment for the project. Each customer has unique um, values and returns that they're looking for on the project. So we want to continually evaluate those as we're developing uh, additional solutions. Here you see a customized solution we developed for a customer that had a heavy case pick requirement. Once we analyzed the data, we realized that over 90% of the case picking was ordered in greater than layer quantities. So you see the automation focuses on reducing the labor of those picks. Here we're receiving product with a monorail system. That monorail system feeds into the automated storage system. The automated storage system feeds full pallets automatically out to shipping or feeds donor pallets to the layer and case pick cells. We're using a monorail system on this project because the throughput requirements are exceed what is possible with standard pallet conveyor. As we turn the corner, you see on the right side the shipping lanes. And then on the left side, you see the two layer pick cells. These cells can select one or all of the layers on a pallet and deliver them to one or up to eight different order pallets. With 90%, over 90% of the case picking, these cells only need two people, one each, to remove the stretch wrap from the cells before entering into layer picking. On the left here, you see the manual case pick area. This is a manual pick, but we automatically deliver order and donor pallets. During the design and execution phase of a project, Viastore has a number of tools at our disposal to ensure that the system we are designing uh, meets the requirements once it's executed. The first thing we use, as you see here in this video, is a simulation. We take the actual customer data, modify it so it equates to the future needs of the operation, and then we run throughput verifications. We can run system flow analysis where we seek out bottlenecks. Um, we can run operational and order scenario testing. And it also can be a future tool we leave behind for the customer so they can test future business needs down the road if they have a new client or new product coming into their operation. The second tool we use is Demo 3D. In the sales, phase, sales and design phase, we use this as an animation tool as you saw on the previous slide. Uh, we also use it for emulation. So this allows us to take the, PL, the actual PLC code and the WMS code and we run the system, performing any commissioning and debugging we can before we arrive on site. This makes for an easier startup with less bugs once we actually do get to site and start the system up. Demo 3D also allows us to create virtual reality environments for operator stations. We can set the station up as it will be built and allow operators to get into the model and test out ergonomics and operator efficiency. Once the design is completed and we go into the execution phase, Viastore can manage and execute the entire project with our in-house project management, site management, engineering, and programming uh, teams. Uh, this will ensure that we maintain on schedule and on budget. Viastore operates the automated systems using our Viadot, WMS, and WCS software. The software will control inventory, product movement, order handle orders and can run the entire facility if that's what the customer needs. This tool has a new user interface that we implemented recently that as you'll see in the upper right allows for each operator to create their own customized desktop delivering information to them uh, that is important for them to execute their jobs properly. And in order to maintain the partnership with our customers, we offer 24/7 hotline support and also preventative maintenance. All of this service is performed out of our Grand Rapids office, uh, utilizing various techs across the country. We do this to ensure that the systems we put in uh, continue to service our customers' uh, operational needs for many years after their start after the startup. We uh, appreciate you joining us today. Hopefully you found this information valuable. If you have any questions, please contact us at the information below. Thank you.